Good day fellow investors, I recently came across a chart that shows 90 years of stock market returns year by year and then I, saw, I thought I could combine that to a chart that shows the evolution of the stock market over, over more than 90 years, 120 years and then I could make a great video showing what really matters when it comes to investing in stocks and where are we now and that will give you a perspective also where you are in your point in life and how the stock market can add value, create wealth for you or you are looking at the stock market trying to make money but actually too risky depending where you are in life and what are your financial goals. So let's immediately start with the two charts. One chart is this 90 years of stock market returns S&P 500 and I wish to discuss positive tailwinds of stock market investing, volatility, uh, how it evolves year up, year down, year in, year out, the valuations and then how it is all about you and that we'll be discussing also taking into account this chart from the Dow Jones. This is up to 2014, now we are 29,000 up for, from the 24,500 level there but still very very good historical lessons to be taken from the two uh, charts. So let's start with the first chart. We have year by year split of all the returns over the past 90 years and the key is that there have been 66 positive years and 25 negative years. This means that investing in the stock market is a positive sum game which means that if you do it smartly you'll win a lot, you'll end up well off and you will gain very very much from investing in the stock market over your financial life cycle which is crucial when it comes to investing. The Dow Jones index went from 16 yes 16 points 120 years ago to the current 29,000 something which is an insane a remarkable feature especially as all the stocks that were in the Dow Jones index are not in it anymore which means that even if things change and I'll make an update on how to invest in index funds how to get take advantage of index fund investing also for my stock market free stock market investing course that you can find the link in the description below but I also upload those videos on YouTube so don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell. So positive tailwinds is what we are talking about when it comes to investing but you have to also keep in mind volatility. You have to expect that there is a 5% chance that you will see your portfolio go down more than 20% even to 50% in a year and that there is a 10% chance that it will drop more than 10% in a year. 50% down in a year is possible however 50% or more up in a year is also possible especially on individual stocks. So keep always in mind the volatility when it comes to investing. Year in, year out, it doesn't really matter. The stock market, we'll see later, moves often in trends and therefore it's very important to see, okay, which trend are we in and later we'll compare it to valuations. 1930 was down 20 to 30 percent, 1931 50 to 40 percent. If we look at 2016 was a positive year, 10 plus 20 to 20 percent up, 2017 positive year, 20 to 30 percent up, 2018 was a slower year, let's say at zero with the dividend and then 2019 was a great year with a 30 percent uh, increase in the S&P 500. However, the stock market as I said usually works in trends and there have been 20 years of stock market returns, nominal stock market returns being at zero. The last 12 years have been from the peak of the dot-com bubble 1999 to 2012 and then stock market reversed and went up significantly before that from the 1960s till 1982 17 years of zero returns and also 25 years of zero returns from the 1929 stock market bubble and this is something you have to keep in mind but if you are a real investor then things are again easy because let's say you invest now and over the next three years the stock market crashes 50 percent. Many would be devastated. I would be happy because most of us especially the in YouTube investor base 
are net investors, which means that each month, each year, we add money to the stock market, which means that the lower stock prices are, the higher our long-term returns will be. And that's a win situation. If you invest now and stocks go continue to go, go, go up, up and up, it's again a win situation. So it's always a win-win situation, but you have to apply common sense and invest properly. So dollar cost averaging, some might call it, but if we constantly add investments over our investment life cycle, then stock market is a win-win situation. So the key thing to really keep in mind is that we buy businesses, we accumulate wealth over the long term, long term life cycle. And when stocks go down or are down, you buy things on a discount that will increase your investment returns. And then on the discount, a good thing to watch are valuations. This is the cyclically adjusted price earnings ratio that shows the average 10 year earnings in relation to the price of the stock market. So in 1929, the cyclically adjusted price earnings ratio was above 30. Now it's at 31. Also, it was above 30 during the dot com bubble. And if you look at the long term returns afterwards, those weren't that good. So there is a pattern when it comes to investing related to valuations. As I said, 2001, 2002, and then also 2020, the price earnings ratio is 32. So the stock market from a historical perspective is very, very risky. But if the valuations are down, like it was the case in 2009, with the price earnings ratio of just 13, that implies a 7, 8% stock market return. That is what we enjoyed over the last 10 years. So valuations really, really matter when it comes to investing. Also, if you compare the valuations, very low in the 1930s, very high in 1929. Subsequently, those that invested in 1932 did much, much better than those that invested in 1929. Similar situation, 1960s, similar 2000s, and similar later. The key is that you have to always implement all the ifs when it comes to the stock market. What would I do if my portfolio crashes 50% next year? It is a possibility, therefore you have to keep that in mind when it comes to investing. If you know exactly what you will do, you are an investor and you are ready to invest in the stock market. If my portfolio crashes 50% next year, I have my 70% cash allocation at the moment, 17% cash allocation, I will deploy that, probably take some margin depending on the dividend yields and what's going on with the businesses I own. If it goes up another 50%, I'll probably look at what are my other investing options with lower valuations and then switch on to that. So if you know all your ifs and this chart shows whatever can happen in the stock market, you have to be ready for anything. And this is the beauty of this chart. And you have to see how this fits your current financial situation. And if there is a scenario that you can't weather from your current financial situation, then the answer is pretty simple. Don't invest because it's too big of a risk. And usually people do the wrong thing at the wrong moment in time. If you can't handle this 25 years at zero and add money during those 25 years, and that will give you great returns, then you shouldn't be investing in stocks at all. And I'll tell you a very important story. When I was a accounting professor at the Amsterdam Business School, a former colleague, colleague of mine, also a finance teacher, he sold what he has been accumulating 10 years prior, he sold in 2008. And this is the Amsterdam Stock Exchange Index. And we spoke in 2015, 2016, sorry, and then he started to slowly go back in with what was left of his money. But he lost a huge of amount of money when selling and he sold at the wrong time because he couldn't watch his portfolio deteriorate over that time. The poor guy lost probably more than 25% of his life cycle wealth because he sold at the wrong moment in time. He was panically watching those stock prices instead of buying more of good businesses or knowing what he was holding onto, he sold in panic late October, 2008, and then didn't return into the market till 2015, 16, slowly starting to get him back into the market. 
the loss if he would just had reinvested the dividends back then he would have a huge return which would now would be 50 percent and more of his net wealth making the right financial decision over a long period of time at that moment when those moments like 2008 come is crucial and therefore you have to keep all the ifs in mind and what you would do when those ifs come and by looking at the stock market history you learn what can happen and how you would and how you would react to that and be prepared that's the key when it comes to investing in the stock market the second key is of course subscribe to this channel click that notification bell so that you don't miss any videos that might add value to your financial uh, life to your financial decision making where the mission of this channel is to help you make better financial decisions in time thank you looking forward to your comments i always love to read them and answer them so please put one and click a like if you like this i'll see you in the next video